Hello everyone and welcome. For we're gonna have three videos here to talk about how to design and analyze a gable roof system. So within the three videos that I'll be doing, um, our objective is to figure out the anticipated loads on the roof, determine the maximum moment of shear that the raptors are going to experience, size the correct raptor to withstand anticipated loads using Douglas for large number two. Um, what I will also be doing in this video is that there's going to be some thrust um, that the ceiling joists are going to see. So we need to care, take care of the thrust. We have to see if the ceiling joist has enough strength, uh, tension strength. We also have to connect the raptors to the ceiling joists and what connections could we use and make sure that, let's say, if we are using nails, has enough capacity for the thrust. And we also have to make sure that Deflection is good for the raptors and deflection is also good for the cylinder. So we'll be talking about this throughout the three videos I'll be doing and uh, hopefully you have a clear understanding on how to design and analyze a gable roof system. And actually if you're able to understand how to do this for a gable roof, then you apply it to many other types of roofs, uh, a hip roof, uh, dutch, and so on. Very, so th this is like the, f the bread and butter, this is the foundation with this is going to help you design many, many other things so let's do this so the manual that I'll be using uh, it'll be I'll be in accordance with the NDS uh, manual and here we'll be using the supplement the supplement has uh, design specification design values for wood construction and the addition here is the 2015 edition here we have a gable roof we have a raptors we have a uh, ceiling joists over here we have our bearing walls we have our top plates all right and again this is around approximately like 24 feet uh, the height of this is uh, around 12 feet approximately so it's close to 12 to 12 pitch the Dello materials is uh, we have the two by two by member at 16 inches on center so I don't know what we'll be using for uh, raptor sizes. I don't know if it's going to be 2 by 12, 2 by 10, 2 by 8, 2 by 6. I don't know. So, but to be conservative, I'm going to say that it's 2 by 12s and 2 by 12, 2 by 12s at 16 inches on center is giving me a weight of 3 pounds square feet approximately. Uh, sheathing is 2 pounds square feet, quarter inch shingles 2 pounds square feet, and then other could be electrical, could be mechanical, uh, 3 pounds square feet. So the total here. Is 10 pounds square feet. You know, and I, I, what I what I did forget to include here is jib, uh, but I guess we'll, we'll fall into the other. Uh, that's why we have some extra fluff in there. All right, so that our our dead load is 10 pounds square feet, so that's good. Now I live in New England, and we do see a lot of snow, a lot, a lot of snow. So that what controls here uh, in New England is snow. So usually I get I calculate my dead load, I calculate my snow load. And then I also calculate uh, if it's a commercial building, I will have I have to calculate the wind load, any uplift, if uh, it's residential, the residential code, the IRC um, 2009 code has uh, tables for uplift. So if you want to design for hurricane ties, it's very simple. You just go to this table and it will tell you um, what is the pounds per linear feet that the or the pounds. That the rafters or the ends will see now for this video uh, or and for the other videos I'll be doing I won't really touch much into uh, hurricane ties maybe I'll have that in another video but for this video at least in this specific one too we'll just be getting the anticipated loads the dead and snow load and we'll be we'll see if in, within this, within this video uh, we'll see if I could get that maximum shear and maximum moment so, all right so here we have the uh, snow load we want to find out the snow load so what i'll be using is this equation from the ASCE uh, 7.3-1 and it's a flat roof snow load so here it's saying that okay we have snow here on the roof and the wind itself is going to be blowing off some of that some of that snow so we have some snow load and the wind is going to come it's going to blow off Some of that snow off, so they're saying that uh, at least thirty percent of the snow is going to be blown away. 
now we have here some factors here that we we have to uh, look at we have the exposure factor ce we have the thermal factor ct we have the importance factor i so the exposure factor is just telling you is is this house or building exposed is it uh, by the wind is there a lot of trees around or, or buildings um, if there is a lot of trees or buildings then the wind can't really blow off um, the snow so then you will have to amplify the exposure factor now if there's let's say there's no snow i mean excuse me if there's no trees around or any obstructions then the wind will be able to blow off more snow so then you could uh have like i don't know like a 0.9 for exposure factor i, I forget but you would be able to reduce the uh, flat roof snow load but the thermal factor here it talks about okay what is the temperature in, in this uh, system here are you keeping this roof uh, below zero uh, freezing or is it ventilated is it some type of ventilation so it's not really below zero but it's still pretty cold or is it habitable are there people living here and due to that will um, the roof itself will be pretty warm or, or you know melt the snow so I'm gonna say that for at least for this example we're gonna have some people living in this space uh, in this attic space here we're gonna make it habitable. So our thermal factor here is going to be 1.0. Our exposure factor here is gonna be 1.0. As a residential house, so our importance factor here is, go is going to also be 1.0. Now we have also have a slope roof snow loads or the slope roof factor we have to see and take, take advantage of. This roof here is at a slope. So if you see this right here, is a, a figure and we could use this figure to find out the cs factor so on the next slide it was just it's just a blown up version of what you just saw uh, it's a 12 of 12 pitch the temperature factor here is one so we could use this figure over here so if you go down then across it's approximately 0.6 something i'm just gonna say it's 0.7 so our cs factor is uh 0.7 so now that we have our dead load, we have our, and we don't have our snow load yet, but we could find now. Now, we, if we have the ground snow load, and I think I forgot to talk about that, the PG here is the ground snow load of the specific area of this structure. So now that we have that, we could calculate the snow load, uh, the flat roof snow load, or the slope roof snow load. And then again, I think I skipped this. Uh, the snow load here mass i'm using the state board building regulations and standards now this is the building code i sh i should have got the residential that the res residential has lower values but it's okay same concept you're gonna have your ground snow load i'm gonna use lawrence mask that's where i live uh ground snow load which is 50 psf so the flat roof pf is 0 0.7 times ce times ct times the importance factor times the ground snow load so just plug everything in 0 0.7 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 50 pound square feet that's gonna give us 35 pound square feet and then we have our CS factor here our slope factor which is 0.7 so then we could also we could now reduce this this 35 pound square feet to something less so snow load uh, slope uh, roof load will be 0.7 times 35 pound square feet if you do that you multiply those two together you're gonna get 24.5 pound square feet so now we have our we have our dead load which is 10 pound square feet and now we have our snow load which is 24 0.5 uh, pound square feet so we have our dead we have our snow so the next thing we'll be doing and I think this this would be the last thing that we'll be doing is we'll be gonna find the uniform load the load and the uniform uh, snow load and I think that's it for the next video what I'll do is we'll have to combine the dead load with the snow load and I'll tell you guys why gals and guys we'll tell you guys why and uh 
yeah, so that'll be that, our next video. So uh, stay tuned. I uh, hope uh, this uh, helped you a little bit. Um, again, it's a lot to cover. Cover. So uh, uh, I'm just gonna wrap it up here. So it's just we, what we found out for this video was the anticipated loads onto this roof. We have the dead load, which is 10 pounds square feet, and we have our snow load, which is 24.5 uh, pounds square feet. Thank you, and I'll see you again. Bye bye.